Hello and welcome to another video in your free fiddle tip fall. Now this is also a video that I'm going to tease publicly on YouTube, so if you're watching this on YouTube, you can be a member of the free fiddle tip vault. Again, it's totally free as you can tell in the name, and there's a whole bunch of other videos on intonation, on bowing, on memorization and phrasing, all within the context of Irish fiddle music. So. I am classically trained, so I'm a little biased towards this technique that I'm about to show you today, but if you are also classically trained, you'll know what I mean. Scales. Scales are so important and you can use them to practice pretty much any technique in Irish music. Now, this is going to be in the intonation section of the Free Fiddle Tip Vault, so in my last video I talked about using really long, slow bows and playing along with a tuner that has an actual like pitch drone on the app, so I use clear tune but you can use any tuner and just kind of check it um, as long as you can see where the note is. Like if you have a little dial, um, you can see how accurate it is. So obviously I can't show you right now because I'm recording this on my phone, but uh, I would just play along and look at the tuner and see where the dial is. So you just do really long, slow bows. Maybe doing micro adjustments with your finger. A D major scale that your third finger is the easiest to get in tune because it just goes right next to your second finger and you've already been setting the second finger in place so first and second you might have to do more adjustments than third and it'll change based on what scale you're working on but and which whole and half steps you're working with however that's just something to keep in mind. Um, you can also tell if your strings are in tune when you're doing open strings with that exercise. But there are so many other ways that you can use this technique, use scales to check intonation. You can speed it up a little bit. <laughs> a whole lot of lawn slurs um, going right up the scale, but you might need to do the lawn bow for a roll. <laughs> followed by a cut so you will actually have these patterns where you're doing seven notes all on one bow so you can practice just going right up the scale going up and down the scale just long slow bows and this is also a great exercise for tone so I talk about in some of my courses the different factors that go into tone and I've talked a little bit about it here on in the fiddle tip vault as well but you want to be aware of what lane you're in also how much weight and speed you're using when you're uh, putting pressure on the bow, what angle the bow is at, and how much bow you're using. Now, this is gonna be a case where you're using more bow perhaps than usual if you were playing a reel. Like a, when I play a reel, I probably only use about this much bow. And some of them, there's exceptions, but for the most part, you wanna just aim for using less bow, especially on the faster tunes because the notes are just going by so quickly and you wanna be able to keep up. So you can use scales and focus on a different part of your tone element every time that you're doing it. So you can easily fit five minute scale practice into any of your practice sessions and change your focus each time you play it. So maybe this time I'll want to focus on keeping my bow in lane three. Now this is handy because I'm looking right at my phone, I can see where it is, but you might want to practice with a mirror. I'm trying to keep my bow in just one place right in the center between the bridge and the fingerboard and I'm just very intensely staring at, um, at either the screen or the mirror you can practice this on a phone too and making sure that my bow is straight and it's not uh, going this way or this way you can also practice it with angle so let's try doing a scale with the angle with your bow stick pointed a little bit away from you Now let's try it with the hair flat on the string. And just for fun, let's do with the stick pointing inward and then the bow hair pointing outward. Mm -hmm. 
I wouldn't tend to use that angle as much. It actually feels kind of weird on my wrist, but I would be more of an outward angle or uh, straight on depending on the technique that I'd be using. So those are a couple of ideas for using scales for tone. Now we can also use them for rhythm, and this is something I mentioned in uh, my email newsletter a couple weeks ago. I had taken a workshop with Colin Farrell down in Atlanta, Georgia for the Atlanta Irish Fest, and he was talking about how you use scales to work on rhythm. So you can literally just take the rhythm from a tune type, we'll do a jig and a reel here for example, and you can just play scales. Now you could do a little pattern. <laughs> You could do it like that, or you could just do three bows per note. Colin taught the first option, but I wanted to add in another one just so I'm not just taking his stuff and putting it in a tip for you all. And then the real pattern. You'll notice that if you try and do this bow is separate the entire scale you are going to start to creep towards the tip and run out of bow so you can just take a slur anytime um, where you feel like you need to inch back up the bow I typically do three notes do the first three notes of a group of four eighth notes to add that slur in. So that's one option for rhythms. You could also do and you can do this on any scale but we're just doing D major to be consistent here. So that's just some things you can do. You can take any tune type and just mimic the rhythm and play a scale with it especially if you're having a hard time grasping the consistency of the tune. It helps to just kind of eliminate all the different notes you have to think about memorizing and just play a scale, just focus on the rhythm, just be very consistent. You can tap your foot along. You can just tap it on the first, uh, the first note of each of the group of four eighth notes. So that's another option. And then the last option that I'll talk about, because this is getting a little long, um, is phrasing. And you can do this with your bow pattern. So you could just be adding in different slurs, you can be emphasizing different parts of the notes, and you can use a scale to practice that. So that might not be a super Irish pattern to do, but you could do You can start practicing cuts in there as well. This is a bit of a jig of slurs uh, bow pattern. I'm just, uh, I'm slurring a couple of notes at the end. if you like to distinguish that that's a, a new note. So that's another option for phrasing. You can play around with the bowing and there's so many different options that I'm not going to go into all of them because that would make this video way too long. But those are just some ideas to get you started of different ways you can use scales. And the nice thing is when you're playing scales for five minutes a day, at least, then you're getting all of this practice in all of these different techniques. So even if you're focusing on tone, maybe you're also subconsciously working on intonation because you're playing these scales so regularly. So I know it's kind of a classical music thing to talk about practicing scales and arpeggios and um, doing all these technical warm-ups, but it really, really does benefit you in Irish music as well. So if you are looking to significantly up-level your technique, if there's a part of your technique that you're really trying to work on in improving, then I would highly recommend using scales to get you to that goal. So hope that you found this helpful. Let me know what other tips you would like to see in the vault, uh, either the end of this year or going into 2022, and I will be happy to throw those up for you. And I hope that you all have a wonderful day.